This video was sponsored by JLC PCB. Hello everyone! Today I have something special. I will be making my own ECX333 driver board clone. It's based on original Chinese design which you can buy on AliExpress. It has built-in micro HDMI port which delivers power and video signal. I carefully recreated all of the connections so it will work just like original board. Of course I've ordered them from JLC PCP, just like every other time. Each and every board comes safely packaged in cardboard box and bubble wrap. It also has a project name on the packaging, which helps a lot when you order multiple boards. Each time you order from JLC PCB, you get at least 5 pieces. This is super helpful when testing your own prototypes. If the first board comes out wrong, you can just redo it with no writing required. The board itself looks super clean and well done. You can clearly see all of the traces and vias. I've also made a newer improved version, which is slightly different from original design. I didn't want to wait for the first one to arrive, so I've made two versions and ordered them at the same time. Right at the start you can notice it has slightly smaller size and rounded corners. I've called it version 0.12. Here you can see both ports side by side. The newer one looks better, but there are of course technical changes as well. Most of them are hidden however, since it's a 4 layer board. Keep in mind that both of them work the same way as the original one. Just like most of the times, I will have to transfer all of the parts from original board, since I don't have full bill of materials yet. I read all of the part values already, but I need to find the closest viable values and test them out. This is because there is a measuring error when reading SMD parts. Now that I have the board properly prepared, I can start the part transfer. It's best to test the original board first just to make sure that it still works before transfer. As you can see, it works just like it should. Now I can simply transfer all of the parts from one board to another using hot air. You can put your soldering station at 250 degrees to try and desolder the ribbon cable connector, but it's very hard to do. It's super easy to damage the connector, so it's best if you just buy a new one before ordering the boards. As you can see, it just snapped mm -hmm. in half. I've changed the temperature to 450 degrees and now I will transfer the regular components. 450 may be too hot in some cases, but it's a Chinese hot air station and this specific temperature works best in my case. It's best to solder the main chip first, since it's bigger than any other part. You might need to correct the individual pin connections, so do that before soldering the smaller parts around the chip. And now I will transfer all other parts to the new board. I've left the ribbon connector for last, since it melts super easy when soldering other parts. Thankfully I've got a lot of spare connectors in my drawer. And here we have a new board with all of the components in place. It's super dirty right now, so we need to clean it first. I've got a simple plastic bucket for alcohol cleaning. I might buy something better in the future. I will put my board in alcohol and leave it for a while. After a while you can really tell the difference. Now let's see if it actually works. I'm using the same display that came with the original board. 
It's an Sony ECX333. My board uses the micro HDMI cable, just like original. It seems that it works, but it needs some time to get going. It looks alright, but there is this weird color tint to it. I might need to correct that in future versions. It also gets slightly hot. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.